Hey friends, Heather Erickson here with The Car Project. Today we're studying the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, which we find in Luke 18, verses 9 through 14. Um, as we dive into this parable, the first thing we always love to do when we study a parable is figure out who Jesus is talking to. So we read it right in verse 9, um, and if you dive in with me and read it to, together with me today, it says, To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, this is the parable that Jesus told them. And I was like, okay, so it's likely Pharisees, uh, religious leaders, which we'll get to in a second of who they are if you're not familiar with that term. But I was like, this also could be describing me. I can get confident sometime and I can also have, look down at other people. So I'm like, okay, all right, Lord, I'm listening as we dive in here. Uh, so we have two people that, that Jesus talks about in our parable, the Pharisee and the tax collector. And they're headed to the temple to pray. The Pharisee, if we know anything about Jewish religious, uh, uh, religious leaders at all, these, these are, that's what the Pharisee was. Um, back at the beginning of the Bible, when, when, when we look at Moses getting the law from God, God, God descended and said, hey, in order for you to have right standing with me, these are all the things you have to do in order to have right standing. And God was kind of for, um, uh, kind of giving a, the long list on purpose to be able to say, there's nothing you can do. You can't actually be perfect enough to be able to get right standing. And that's why he's going to have to send Jesus. He sends Jesus uh, later in the Bible so that we see that the reason why Jesus came was to abolish the law and have to get rid of it all because we don't have to do all these things. That's, that's, not, that's, not, what God, that's not what God expects of us. But he, he gave these laws to try to show there's nothing we can do. So 613 laws later, the Pharisees are all trying to keep the laws and make sure that everybody knows how to pray and what to eat and how to preserve sanctification and, and make sure they're worthy for God. But they started adding rules on top of it. It's like when you tell your kids, hey, um, you're not allowed to go outside, but instead you say, yeah, you actually can't leave your room because you're trying to add in different buffers and different rules to make sure that they don't break the real rule. Same concept for the Pharisees. They start adding in additional rules. Now, in the heart of it, they were trying to be God-honoring, but they twisted it to become more about what they did and making sure that they were um, they were seen for how well they kept the law. And they started it, it started to get tainted, um, and that's what we see a little bit in today's parable. We see we see some of the taintedness, which we'll get to. The second person in our story is a tax collector. Um, in um, that time, in the Roman rule, um, tax collectors would um, take on the taxes and accept them from the people so they could pay Rome. Now, if you were a Jewish tax collector. In that time period, you would usually would have, that would mean that you have turned your your back from your Jewish family to be able to go and work for Rome. But in addition to that, as a tax collector, you could add on additional fees to the taxes you were collecting and pocket them for yourself, and Rome would be fine with it as long as they got their money. They're good with whatever you did. So these tax collectors became greedy and dishonest. They became um, known as um, at the level of prostitute and sinner, like that that level of of scum in the world. So now we enter into our parable where Jesus is describing to these people coming to the temple to pray. And he, I'm just going to read it for you because it's so good. So two men went to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. I'm reading out of an NIV Bible, by the way. Uh, the Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance, he couldn't even get close to the temple, he stood at a distance, he wouldn't even look up to heaven and he beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. So Jesus um, described, you can not only can you, as you understand what a tax collector is and a Pharisee, you can see this embodied in who they are and how they talk and the way that Jesus describes them. And Jesus says at the end, I tell you that the man, that this man, the tax collector man, uh, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all of those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. How powerful. Here we have um, the tax collector leaving justified. And yet the Pharisee spends his time talking about, not only am I not like these guys, but look at all the stuff I did. Like if you are standing in front of God and you get to say, I'm not that guy, I'm not that guy, I'm not that guy, and I did all these amazing things, did you see my checklist? And God's like, that doesn't matter to me. It's the purpose and the posture of your heart that matters to me. And if you're willing to humbly acknowledge the sin in your life and bring it to God, that's what he cares about. And that's what makes this, power, this parable so powerful. Because it not only is speaking to the people listening to Jesus in the original audience, it speaks directly to us. 
It speaks directly to me. I find myself easily wanting to have more confidence um, uh, in who I am by myself rather than who I am through God. And if I were to humble myself and know that I am nothing without God, um, it, it, it totally changes the perspective. And I hope that this uh, parable was as encouraging to you as it was to me. I hope you have a great day. God bless.